All right, Reverend Colonel here. I got a slight change in plans of what I was going to do today. Uh, I was going to replace my alternator. And uh, so I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, put in a new battery. But I didn't get the right alternator shipped. So anyway, that was more my fault than anything. I guess I didn't read the fine print. All right, so that's the beautiful, gorgeous alternator I was going to put in. The other one will look just like it. But this is for a V-belt, not a serpentine belt. And um, even though it said that it fit my truck, it doesn't fit my truck because it's the wrong belt. So anyway, uh, I'm also going to replace the battery. I'm going to put in this optimal battery in right here. And what my game is here is with this battery. This is a much better battery than the battery I've currently got in, which is just a cheap little battery. This is going to give me more power. But this thing right here is going to really give me more power because it's 150 amps compared to 60 amp alternator that I currently have that comes stock in the truck right now. So we're going to replace that eventually gonna replace this today uh, I just gotta wait on my alternator to get shipped to me and I will have that in a few days and then I will do another video on that so today I'm gonna go ahead and change the battery and I'm also going to clean my air filter which has gotten grossly dirty so uh, that'll help but the way this will work to add more power is having 150 amps instead of 60 amps is going to send a lot more power to my fuel injection system which in turn is going to give me more power and supposed to increase my gas mileage by quite a bit so we're going to add a few horses and uh, maybe add two or three more miles or so to the gallon on gasoline which would be fantastic because as you know these big trucks drink some gas all right so we'll get our battery cables off first thing you're going to do if you're going to change the battery out you got to take the cables off we'll loosen them this one seems like it's a tad bit loose that's not good all right I've got both of those loose and off. And we'll move that one out. All right. And now we can just pull this thing right out of here. And we're ready to put in the next one after I finish washing out the filter there. So we've got uh, cleaner sitting on it and now we get to rinse it out with some water and we'll see how clean it gets. Alright so I've got my beautiful Optima battery sitting in here. It looks gorgeous and this engine bat red really stands out. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was taking apart my wires is on my power line if you can see that there, that thing looks like it has like, whew, had some arcing or something going on there at one time or another. It's probably original. It's a number two wire. It's like really thick. Um, and it was, I couldn't get the whole, I couldn't get a new wire for it. But the wire is probably okay. And of course I'm replacing this because it looks atrocious. And... Um, I'm going to put a new one on there. Um, I'll probably leave that one alone. It looks good. I got a set of two, so if I need to replace that one later, I can. But this one definitely needs to go. So I'm going to take that one off. Uh, I'm going to cut my wire here. I've got way more than enough wire here to do this. Because um, I'm only going from there to there on the solenoid. So um, you can see I've got lots of extra wire so I'm gonna do some cutting on the wire and put a new lead on there uh, I've got these at AutoZone got uh, some new leads right there that'll fit on that end of the cable and 
the battery clamps right there. So that's what we'll do next while we are waiting on this air filter to continue to dry. All right, so I clean the air filter down. What you do first is you use some cleaner like this, like k &N or s &B, whatever you got there for these kind of filters. And then after it's good and, and uh, before that dries, don't let the detergent dry on there. It only sits about 10 minutes. Then you rinse it out with cool water for quite a while. I would, I, you, you can't over rinse. Um, it's not going to hurt it. You want to make sure you get all the dirt out of it that you can. And then you spray it down with the, this red Rojo Rouge oil. And that what that's what conditions it. And then once that's sprayed down, let that dry up a little bit and uh, it's ready to go in. So there we go. We got that and we will stick that in. All right, so got the filter put back in. Everything's in place. All nice and beautiful and pretty. And got the battery all connected in. You can see my new leads that I've got on there. And when you do this and you put uh, battery cables on, and you should actually, every year, you should uh, check your terminals, make sure they're clean. Um, you know make sure there's no corrosion and stuff clean it up and you know do whatever you need if you need to replace clamps whatever because um, battery can cause you all sorts of problems if it's not kept up and maintained properly and whenever you put your cables on always 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 use some battery terminal protection spray it's basically like a can you know it's a electrical friendly type of lube type oil that just coats it and protects it and keeps it from corroding and getting that junk on there so i always use that on my terminal leads and on the cables there and um, it, it works out real well you don't end up with all that corrosion build up on there so anyway uh so summit racing is awesome um, they made it real easy for me to return my other one. They just emailed me immediately a thing to send my other one back. And they shipped this out right away. And I got it pretty quick. And here we go. Here's the new alternator being unboxed. And there we go. It's beautiful. Beautiful, just like the other one and you can see here the belt this is not V groove this is made for the type of belt that I have so anyway now I'm gonna put this in and see how it all works so far everything's working good the battery was nice starting up the truck and uh, we're gonna see what this power master does as far as performance and other things so time to put it in all right so here's the old alternator and the first thing you want to do is you want to loosen this bottom nut here a little and uh, then when you loosen this top one up here right there then it's gonna be able to rotate and all that so you can get your belt loose and then you can just disconnect the thing the rest of the way so uh, that's how I do it and then you go in reverse to put it back on so um, belt you know it's dirty but it seems like it's in pretty good shape um, I don't have any cracking or anything like that going on so um, I think we're gonna just be fine keeping the same belt on there so that's what we're gonna do you can see there's a myriad of wires on this wiring harness that go to stuff uh, and that's for the old one right there which is out but the new one here basically all you really have is you have your power right here which we will tie on to new cable that I got for that and uh, but then you need a grounding wire and uh, I did not have a ground wire I wasn't even thinking about that 
how this was going to hook up. I was thinking it was going to be more plug and play, but it's a little more um, engineering. So I found me a bolt and my bunches of bolts I have that will fit into where the ground goes nicely. And since I don't have ground wire and you need to have good sized ground wire for this because it's under 50 amp. So you need at least like a six or something that you don't want to go with the standard one that was in it. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to use a grounding strap because I have a couple of these laying around. And so I'm going to connect that onto there and then I'm going to connect it way down in there right see where the battery is grounding down there so anyway i'm going to ground it in the same place that is and we'll go from there all right so my mission was complete i found a good bolt and a washer for this i put it on but i'm leaving it loose like this so that way I can wiggle it around when I'm moving things in and be able to feed it into where I want to take it to. Uh, like I said, the ground is going to go All right. Let's see if you can see it on the camera. Right way down there. There you go. There's a nut right there. That's where the battery grounds down there and then it grounds down to the block from there so that should be a good enough ground for what we need to do there and uh, I got my other nut and everything ready I went ahead for preparing um, I got the other one out without it but it'd just be a lot easier with this being chrome I don't want to ding it up and all that so I took my top radiator hose off so that way I have a little more extra clearance here. This all moves pretty easily. Uh, I'll probably wrap a clean cloth on it while I take, stick it down in the hole. And I will wear gloves because my hands is getting dirty. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. All right, pulling out all the stops here. I'm using Great Grandpa. Yes, we call that tool there great grandpa why well because it's a long story behind it but I'll do give you the Reader's Digest version uh, great grandpa of my uh, my my wife he worked on the railroad and this was used for moving the railroad ties and the rails and changing them out and all that kind of stuff and I use it for all kinds of stuff. I've used it to break up rock and concrete and things like that in the ground and occasionally to pry on something. So since this is chrome, what I've done is I've wrapped it real good with some shop towels, taped it on there, and the weight alone of this bar has got me at pretty close to the right tension. So I'm barely gonna have to push on this thing at all, not really much. And uh, then I just tighten up that knot and then tighten up the other knot. And uh, my ground is already fed down there. So you can see the ground braided wire down there. So anyway, I just got to hook everything all up and put things back the way they were. All right, it took me a little while. It got kind of dark yesterday, but I got this thing in there and uh, it looks really nice. I mean, it's the shiniest thing <laughs> under my hood here. But, you know, hey, you know, we got the the air filter going on there. We got our newer wires on in there. We've got our new battery and then the new alternator. So it looks pretty good. Uh, you can see back here where this plugs in back here. Next time what I think I'll do is put that on there first because it is really tight space in there and you can see I barely got that boot on there. It just doesn't have much room to get through. So anyway, I got that all connected on there. Then I've got it connected back onto here, onto the solenoid. Got my wire running around. And then all the wires that were connected to it before, I tucked them in here 
and got them taped off and everything because uh, I wanted to leave this green wire here connected into this sensor right here and I don't know if it really makes a difference or not but that's what I did and it works so that's the main thing that's what's really important is that it works so and then uh, the ground wire you can see all the way down there got that connected down onto the frame if you see the bolt is behind that black wire there but anyway that's the ground strap and it comes up and goes in around and goes behind so everything works pretty good uh, let's give it a shot and see what happens when we crank it up all right so here we go let's see how it goes well that started right up sounded good and there we are running nice and smooth Everything's going good. I actually ran it last night because the wife wanted some ice cream. So, we'd already taken it out once. And we'll look at the amperage on there. And that looks good. It tells us that we are getting plenty of amps back into it and it's not moving erratically or anything like that so we know it's doing its job and when I accelerate it does not change anything it just stays safe right where, right where it should be putting back as many as it should be putting in so ran really nice last night I think I felt a little bit of a power difference. So we'll just have to see what it does for the gas mileage. All right, so we got our Power Master alternator all installed and everything works good. It runs good. Uh, I like it. It's really nice. It feels uh, really solid and heavier, much heavier than the one that was in there before. Should be because it's over twice the amount of amperage before I had 60 amps and I got 150 amps so uh, that battery should never run low and it should give a lot of power while the while the, the vehicle is running uh, it'll push off of that alternator and it'll it'll uh, you know keep everything running at optimum levels which will keep everything in the system running cooler and stuff which hopefully is going to Im improve horsepower a little bit but most more than anything trying to increase miles per gallon and uh, after I've had a little while to test I've got a baseline from before and then we'll check and see what we do this time and see how much of a change in miles per gallon it was so we know if this was actually worth doing as far as that goes other than it being really pretty and being very durable so the power master really like it seems really good summit racing did a great job came through for me even though uh, i got the wrong part on the alternator um you know that was partially my fault you know uh so but all i had to do is make a quick phone call and uh talk to the gal there she knew it things were going on and uh, Brianna I believe it was and uh, kudos to you Brianna you did a great job at Summit Racing and uh, uh, got me fixed up it just had an easy shipping label that they emailed me to send the other one back I got credited right away and they sent my other one immediately and I got it back out so I'm very very happy with that so just hoping for the more uh, for the everything to improve with the truck with this um, you know 
going for the more horsepower and the more miles per gallon reminds me of in the Bible in John 14, 25 and John 16, 7, where it talks about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit Jesus talks about that he's going to give to us that's going to guide us and to help us. And then in Acts, we see the power and the endurance that the Holy Spirit gives us. So it's a lot like with the truck, you know, I'm trying to get more power, but I'm also trying to get more miles per gallon. So it helps with the endurance with that. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind, you know, uh, Jesus for his believers he has given us the holy spirit and he's given us the power of the holy spirit you can converse with the holy spirit and you can ask the holy spirit for his help he said he gave us the holy spirit to be our helper and to guide us and to empower us and to help us to be able to endure and to give us the right words to say and so you know just rely on that rely on that holy spirit ask god to just fill you with the spirit you know and uh, the more you get filled with the spirit the more the spirit will fill you and uh you know it's just like other things uh even money and things like that god talks about you know i'll give you a little and if you're a good trustee with a little you'll get more and the same thing goes with the holy spirit you know i mean all believers have the holy spirit dwelling in them but uh some people aren't tapping into it you know and you know this is a great thing that you can tap into it's just like changing from that factory uh alternator that i had into this other alternator that is more than twice the power and uh you know that's what the holy spirit will do for you in your life you know it'll give you more than twice the power of anything that you've ever experienced in your life to help you to get through and to endure and to guide you in life so anyway everybody keep that in mind and i hope everyone's doing well and staying well uh please subscribe and share this video if you like it and keep your soles clean and your boots dirty. This is the way. Reverend Colonel, signing out.